Welcome to Master Middle School Math. This video can be used as a model for teachers to teach their own students. It can also be used by students to learn math, and it can also be used by parents as a model to help their own children. Today we will learn how to add and subtract fractions. What is a fraction? Well, a fraction is parts of a whole object. So the bottom number, the denominator, is how many pieces the object is divided into. For example, if it's divided into three pieces, it'll be thirds, five pieces, fifths, twelve pieces, twelfths, and so on. The top number is the numerator, and that's how many pieces you have of the whole object. So if it's divided into thirds and you have one piece, it would be one-third. If you have two pieces, two-thirds, so on and so forth. The way the fraction looks is that it's a number on top with a line and then a number on the bottom. The top number is called the numerator. The bottom number is called the denominator. The way I remember this is that denominator starts with D. D is for down. So the number that is down, the number that is under the line, the bottom number is the denominator. Fractions are not just parts of a whole object, but a fraction is a math problem all by itself. Fractions are division problems. They are a standalone math problem without any operation signs. They are a division problem. Four eighths is the same as saying four divided by eight. This is a concept you would like to understand because you are going to start learning algebra and this concept is used a lot in algebra. So a fraction is a division problem, so let me show you how it works. So here we have a fraction, two-fourths. The two goes inside the house, so we can always remember that the top goes inside the house. And the denominator goes outside the house, so two-fourths is telling us that two is being divided by four. Steps for adding fractions. Look at the denominators, the bottoms of the fractions, and you need to ask yourself, are they the same? In order to add or subtract fractions, denominators must be the same. If the denominators are the same, it's much easier. All we have to do is add or subtract the numerators. Here's our example. One-fifth plus three-fifths. Our denominators are the same, so we're going to add our numerators. One plus three equals four. Since our denominators stay the same, our fraction is one-fifth plus three-fifths equals four-fifths. Now I have to determine if I have to reduce that answer. So the way I do that is I ask myself, is there a number, the same number, that will go into both the numerator and the denominator evenly? Is there a number that divides into the top and the bottom evenly? There is no number that goes into both four and five evenly except one, and one will give us the same fraction so we are fully reduced. If the denominators are not the same, you need to find a common denominator. And you want to find the least common denominator because that will make your work easier. So the first step is to ask yourself, is one denominator a factor of the other? A factor is a number that when you multiply it with another number, it gives you a product. For example, 2 and 3 are both factors of 6 because 2 times 3 equals 6. If one denominator is a factor of the other, use the larger denominator as your least common denominator. It saves you some work. Here's an example. 5 is a factor of 10, so we're going to change our fifths into tenths. 5 times 2 equals 10, so remember, whatever we do to one side, we must do the other. So since we multiplied the denominator, we're going to multiply our numerator. 1 times 2 is 2. We're going to rewrite our fractions. 1 fifth becomes 2 tenths. 3 tenths stays the same because we use that denominator, remember. 2 plus 3 equals 5. That gives us an answer of 5 tenths. I'm going to ask myself, is there a number that goes into both the numerator and the denominator evenly? And yes, indeed, there is. 5 will go into the top itself once. 5 will go into 10, the bottom, twice. So the reduced answer is 1 half. If one denominator is not a factor of the other, then you're going to have to find the least common multiple of the two or more denominators and use the LCM as the least 
common denominator as the lowest number. Here is an example of how we can find our least common multiple. We have two twelfths and three ninths. So first we're going to look at the multiples of twelve. One times twelve is twelve, two times twelve is twenty-four, and so on. Now we're going to look at the multiples of nine. One times nine is nine, two times nine is eighteen, and so on. Now we're going to look at these two sets of multiples and we're going to ask ourselves, is there a number that both twelve and nine go into evenly? And yes there is, thirty-six is a number. It's the smallest number that both twelve and nine will go into evenly. Here's an example. Two twelfths plus three ninths, our least common denominator is thirty-six because we found that that was our LCM. We're going to multiply twelve times three to give us thirty-six and nine times four to give us thirty-six. Remember, whatever we do to one side we must do to the other. So we're going to multiply our numerator by the same amount, so it's going to be two times three equals six and then it's going to be three times four equals twelve. We're going to rewrite our fractions. Two twelfths becomes six over thirty-six. Three ninths becomes twelve thirty-six. We're going to add our two numerators. Six plus twelve gives us eighteen. Our answer is eighteen thirty-six, but are we finished? We need to ask ourselves: is there a number that goes into both the numerator and the denominator evenly? And indeed there is. The same number will go into the top and the bottom. Eighteen will divide into itself one time and 18 will divide into 36 twice, so our fully reduced answer is 1 half. If you cannot find the least common multiple to use as your least common denominator, do not worry. I'm going to tell you a secret. If you multiply the denominators by each other, you will create a new common denominator. It may be a lot larger, and you may have to reduce more at the end, but it will still work it's okay. So don't panic. If you can't find the LCM, just multiply the denominators by each other and you will have a new common denominator. So here's an example when we don't use our least common multiple. We have two twelfths plus three ninths, the same fraction as before, but now we're going to multiply our denominators that creates a new common denominator. It's rather large, but it works. Whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. So since we multiplied 12 times 9, we're going to multiply 2 times 9. That's going to give us 18. We multiplied 9 times 12, so we're going to multiply 3 times 12. That gives us 36. Our new fractions are 2 twelfths equals 18 over 108. 3 ninths equals 36 over 108. We add our numerators, and that gives us 54 over 108. We're going to reduce. 54 goes into itself once. It goes in to 108 twice, so our reduced answer is 1 half, and as you'll notice, it's the same answer as before. We just worked with bigger numbers, so it works. You will follow the same steps for the subtraction of fractions as you do for the addition of fractions. You will need to find the least common denominator, then you will subtract the numerators as you added them in previous examples. Here's an example of subtraction of fractions. We have 3 ninths minus 2 twelfths. We're going to have to find a common denominator. We're going to use 36. Because we changed the 9 into 36, we will have to do the same thing to the numerator. We changed the 12 into 36, and we're going to have to change that numerator as well. So our new fraction is 12 36 minus 6 36. Now, since we have common denominators, we're going to subtract our numerators. 12 minus 6 is 6. So 12 36 minus 6 36 is going to give us 6 36. And we're going to reduce that by asking ourselves what number goes into both 6 and 36 evenly, the same number. 6 will divide into itself once, and 6 will divide into 36 six times, so we have our final reduced answer. Let's recap what we've learned today. Remember, you need the same denominators in order to add or subtract fractions. That is the rule for adding and subtracting fractions. You always have to have a common denominator. So you're going to ask yourself, are they the same? Are the denominators the same? If so, you just simply have to add or subtract the numerators. Easy. If not, you're going to look at the denominators and you're going to ask yourself, is one a factor of the other? If so, use the larger denominator as your common denominator. It'll save you a little bit of work. 
if one denominator is not a factor of the other, then you are going to have to find the least common multiple and use it as your least common denominator. If you're unable to find the least common multiple, it's okay. You can simply multiply the denominators by each other, creating a common denominator. Now this number will be a lot larger and it may be a little more difficult to work with, but it will still work. So if you can't find the LCM, simply multiply the denominators. After you have a common denominator and you have added or subtracted the numerators, then you have to ask yourself, is the answer in lowest terms? And you do this by asking yourself, is there a number besides one that will divide evenly into both the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator, and after you've exhausted all possible numbers and the only number left is one that will evenly go into both the numerator and denominator, you have your answer in lowest terms. You have finished the problem. Congratulations! Here are some of the academic language that we went over during this lesson. You're going to take these words and write the definition in your own words and draw a picture as an example. Numerator, denominator, factor, least common multiple, least common denominator, and simplify. I hope you found this video useful. Be sure to subscribe so you can get all of the latest updates, and your comments are always welcome. Thank you for visiting.